for measuring time interval in a laboratory. For example, time taken from peak to trough displayed in a CRO. Time taken for a completed oscillation in single pendulum experiment. A timer will be used. Analog stopwatch is the most commonly used timer in the laboratory. Time intervals ranging from second to minute could be measured by the analog stopwatch. The stopwatch must be reset to zero before every measurement. How long will it take for a trolley to travel from point A to point B along the inclined plane? We will first reset the stopwatch ring at zero. We then release trolley point A. At the same time, we switch on stopwatch simultaneously. The reading shown that the time take is 2.8 seconds. We then try to measure the time taken for this horizontal line to travel from peak to trough displayed in the CRO. Ready? One, two, three, start. Ready? Stop. The reading is 7.5 seconds. Can you read out the time measured by the stopwatch? Please note, there are two pointers on the stopwatch. The yellow pointer reads the readings of the inner circle, and the red pointer reads the readings of the outer one. It takes half a minute for each unit in the inner circle, and the yellow pointer takes totally 30 minutes to travel for one complete circle. The reading now is near two units, meaning that the reading approximates to one minute. The red pointer takes 30 seconds to travel for one complete circle. The red pointer reads 27.0, that is 27.0 seconds, and the yellow pointer reads more than one unit. So the final reading will be 30 seconds plus 27 seconds, which is 57 seconds in total. Let's try again. What is the reading now? It reads 4 minutes, 32.6 seconds. Owing to the variance in precision of different stopwatch, the reading error or the scale uncertainty may appear. Such error usually equals to half of the minimum scale. Let's take the stopwatch for example. There are 10 marks in between the 4 and 5 second markings, which means that the minimum unit in scale is 0.1 seconds. Therefore, the reading error or scale uncertainty will be 0.1 divided by 2, which is plus or minus 0.05 seconds. Take another stopwatch, for example. From the reading 50 to 55 seconds, each large marking represents 1 second. In between each large marking, it is divided into 5 small markings, each representing 0.2 seconds. So the reading error or scale uncertainty will equal 0.2 divided by 2, which is 0.1 second. To measure the time interval, only one reading is taken, and the one-tenth digit must be zero. So the maximum possible error equals to the reading error, or scale uncertainty. The maximum possible error of this stopwatch is 0.1 second, while the maximum possible error of another stopwatch is 0.05 seconds. In order to present time measurement in a more precise way, we often state the maximum possible error with the measurement taken. Like this, 57.00 plus or minus 0.05 seconds. For another one, it reads 122.8 plus or minus 0.1 seconds. While we observe the reading from the stopwatch, reaction time error exists. We may switch on and off the stopwatch earlier or later than the event. This error is approximately 0.4 seconds and it's usually greater than the error in measurement. In addition, the stopwatch must be wound up and reset zero. If the time interval to be measured is short, such as time taken for one oscillation in a symbol pendulum, it is suggested to measure the time required for 10 oscillations and divide the result by 10. Therefore, the error will be greatly decreased.